what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace that single light switch box with a double light switch box. So I've got two switches there. One that you see which controls the outside lights to the garage and then I'm going to have another switch which will turn the lights on with inside the garage. And those lights are the ones I'm going to install. I had to remove the cabinet door here just so I can get to it. The first step was to turn off the power. So what I did was I turned on my exterior garage lights. You can see I have the two garage lights are on on the exterior of the garage. And I went to my electrical panel and I had to flip several of these switches until I found the right one and I relabeled it. Turned off the switch to the garage lights. Now they're off, so I know I've got the right breaker. And then I'm going to go back inside and start replacing that single gang box with the double gang box so I can replace one switch location to a two switch location. Now that I have the power to this light switch turned off at the breaker, I'm just going to take a flathead screwdriver, remove this cover plate, and then I'm going to loosen the switch itself. I don't know if you can actually see it, but there's a hole there. Just push a small flathead screwdriver in there and that wire pops right out of there. So there's our hots. Also notice there's two sets of wires here. Two blacks, two neutrals, and two grounds. One set is the incoming power or the line power. And the other set is the, uh, the wiring that leads outside to the garage lights. So I'll have to determine which one is line and which one is load, which is the, uh, the lights themselves. Now one thing you're going to have to determine is if this is an original workbox, was installed when the home was built, which I believe this one is, you'll have to determine where the stud is. You can use the tap method, you can use a stud finder. In my case, I just know that there's a stud on this door frame and that's what the box is actually nailed to so and of obviously in this case the only place I can go to expand this box is over this direction where there should just be maybe just insulation if even that behind this wall so I'm going to take my new box uh, this one I chose specifically because it has two screws here and those will screw into the existing stud. Now you can get the kind with the tabs on it that'll just grab onto the sheetrock. Uh, typically I see them they're blue and they're not my preference. Uh, I really like this style or you could just use nails or screws without having them pre-installed but this is the one I picked off of Amazon and I'll, I'll put links to this in the description. This one is by Southwire and I think it's going to be perfect for what I'm trying to do and uh, Anyway, that's what I'm going to use. This is a double gang box, so I can put two switches or two outlets in this box. But I'm going to hold it up to my existing hole. Right here, you can see that edge is where the stud is located. So I want to get that edge lined up with the existing hole. And then I'm going to put a level on top just to make sure I have the box square or plumb and then hold that tight up against the wall while I trace around it with a pencil. Now this box is going to sit flush with the drywall. So I want to mark, this is another good reason why I like this particular style of box. And then that will show me where I need to cut I'm going to cut just a little shy on the inside of that line just so I don't make the, the hole way too big and have a bad fit for my cover plate. I'm just going to use a, what they call a jab saw or sheetrock saw. Sharp point tip on it so you can poke it through the drywall and then use it to cut out the box. Be real careful that you're not going to damage anything that's behind the drywall because I don't really honestly know what's back behind there. And there we go. So now I have good access to the box 
and we can remove that next. To get that box out of there, I'm going to straighten my wires out again. I pushed them inside a little bit so that I could put that box up on the outside and trace around it. I'm just going to use a screwdriver and there's a nail on the bottom, I can actually see it, and one up on the top that's nailed into this stud. So I'm just going to work my screwdriver in here next to the box, or between the box and the stud, just start prying those nails loose, being careful not to damage the sheetrock. There is an electrical box behind this box on the inside of the wall. So there you can see the two nails that are going into that stud. And you can see the electrical box behind this box. That's for light switches on the inside of this wall. That'll give you a better idea of what I'm actually trying to do. We're just about there. There we go. I should be able to pull the box out of the existing hole. and then pull my wires through. Make sure they're not twisted together like mine are and that'll make it a lot easier to pull the wires out the top of the box. And there you go. Remove the single gang box and now you can see how the nails are that hold it to the stud on the side here. So I'm just going to clean that hole up a little bit. We'll check and see if the new box will fit. So now I've got the two wires that were originally in the box. I've got the line power coming to the switch. I've got the load which is going to the garage lights on the front of the outside of the garage. And then this is the new wire that I just installed and that's going to be going across the ceiling over to where I'm going to put my lights. Now this particular box just sits flush with the outside surface of the sheetrock. So I've got it pushed in there. Let's see if I can hold it in the right spot with a pair of pliers while I put that screw in. And they're Phillips screws, so that's kind of a pain. But I like it better than the kind with the tabs that connects to the sheetrock. So let's try this one, see if it... Next I need to find out which one's line and which one's load. I don't recommend this method, but this is what I'm going to do because it's what I've got available to me. Make sure none of these are touching and nobody else is in the area. After I turn on the breaker, I'll just touch my tester on these two tester on those two and find out which one's got the power then I'll shut the breaker back off. Okay I've got the breaker back on. Two of these wires are live so I'm just going to use my tester and it is not those two. Must be these two. And that's it. So these are load. And this is line. See that light coming on? So the set on the right in the box is the line, which is the hot. So I'm gonna go turn that breaker off. The breaker is off, so let's just double check. No light, so now they're no longer live. So this one on the right, I know is my line. So just for my reference, I'm gonna put a piece of black electrical tape on that particular hot, so I know that that's the uh, line coming into the box, so I don't get it confused in the future. And then now we can get this wired up. I'm just going to use a cheap pair of strippers to strip this uh, neutral and positive for the new light. Strip about three quarters of an inch off of each one of those. And the other ones are already stripped from the previous installation. Okay, now I have to make some pigtails to connect these two switches. I just took a strip of the 14-2 Romex, cut one foot length, pulled the wires out of it, 
and then cut them all in half. So now I have two neutral, two hot, and two ground pigtails that are six inches long. Next thing I want to do is strip all the ends, about three quarters of an inch on all of them. So now I've got all these pigtails and then I'll put hooks on one end of them. And then I've got all my pigtails, two of each. First thing I'm going to do is tie all these grounds together. So I've got three, the line in and then two load lines, one for the new light and one for the old lights. I'm going to twist them all together along with my two jumpers here. Be five wires under this wire nut. So I'm just going to twist them all together to start and then I will uh, put a red wire nut on this group. Since there's so many, I'm certainly going to pre-twist them first. That's just the way I like to do it. I got plenty of wire nuts left over from previous projects, so I'm going to use just your old-fashioned wire nuts. And you can look on the package and see how many wires of what size you can put underneath each nut. There's five twisted together here, so I'm going to use this red. And then twist on the wire nut. I personally like to twist it on until it starts twisting the wire then you know you've got it tight. Each one of my switches will have a ground on it. So these two will go to each one of those. And then I'll tuck all that extra ground wire back into the box. Something like that. The next I'm gonna do is tie all of the neutrals together. The exact same method for these. Now there's only three 14 gauge wires here, so I will use a yellow wire nut for these. And you can see it start to twist those wires together and then you know you've got a good connection with that wire nut. Some people run electrical tape around that as well in addition, but you just want to make sure you don't have any bare wire sticking out of the end of that wire nut. You want to just see Twisted insulation, and I'm not going to use the electrical tape on that. And then I'll neatly tuck that into the back of the box. Now when we get to the hot wires, remember the one I put the electrical tape on is the line in. That's the hot coming into the box. I've got these three hot wires, two load and one line in. So I'm going to connect my two jumpers to this line wire again by doing the twist just like I did on everything else on the previous ones. And that'll get a yellow wire nut on it. Twist it till it starts twisting those wires together. Just my personal preference. And we'll tuck the rest of that back into the box. So here's a look at the switches that I'm going to install. These are the ones I bought off Amazon. I'll put links in the description for these if you care to get the same type. And I'm not a real big fan of this paddle switch, but all the other switches are paddle switches. So I just want it to match. So that's what I got. And these do have a ground screw. So you got the way this is set up is the bottom is the uh, line in on the brass. The brass top one right across from the ground is the load. So that'll go out to my light fixture. And then the ground will go on this green screw right here. So I've got two jumpers from the main hot. That'll go on the bottom of each switch. There's my grounds. And then these two are the lines. So I need to put a hook on each one of those. And we're ready to put the switches in. So the top brass is going to be the uh, load. And you want to put that hook around clockwise around the screw. So just twist it if you need to. This is the one that goes to the garage lights on the outside of the garage. Work that around the screw and give it a good tightening down. Just make sure the insulation doesn't get underneath the screw. If it does, you need to to uh, strip it back a little bit farther. And then one of the original load lines will go on the bottom screw, same fashion. Just 
like that. We'll flip it over, bring one of our grounds up, and that'll go on the ground screw or the green screw. Okay, so I've got the right switch wired up. Let's do the same exact thing to the left switch. And this one is for the new lights that are going to go inside the garage. So I want that switch closest to the door. All we have to do is install our switches into the box. All right, let's get our new cover and see if it fits. All right, that'll work. I'm get my screws for the cover and we'll put that on. Plumb with the door jam and it just looks real nice.